Pleasant good evening to everyone. Um, I'm on. This is a live broadcast on Wednesday, the 7th of October, 2020. And I know I have to thank everyone who sent me their greetings for my anniversary, from our anniversary, I shouldn't say my anniversary, my wife and I anniversary. Unfortunately, I totally forgot today was my anniversary. I make no apologies for that because I just forgot totally. I There was no reminder. There was nothing. Even when October came along, I didn't think, well, I got married in October. Normally, I'll remember these things. But for this year, I totally forgot. Three o'clock this morning when my wife told me, happy anniversary. I was like, oh, my God, today's our anniversary. Thank God she's not the kind of person that hit me over the head with a bill now. Although we, I got, I remember one of our presents that we got for our wedding was a marble bill now. I wonder why my friend Kishore gave me a marble bill now. Now you could imagine getting lashed with a bill now. Or getting lashed with a marble bill now. Thank God I didn't get lashed with a rubble bill now. And she just tell me, I tell she has I totally forget, you know. And you know, of course, today we had an event called Hump Day. Um, I have to thank all those who supported the event. Um, we had a limited amount of space because of what we were doing and how we were doing it. Of course, we have to observe certain protocols, which was all observed. Um, we made sure things were done in a, in, a, in a way that people were protected. Those who came and participated or partake of the event. And I have to thank everyone out there for supporting it. And I know everyone who came enjoyed themselves to the fullest. They even asked me, when is the next one? There'll be another one next week. So those of you who missed out this week, there's another one next week. As a matter of fact, there are two events next week. I will talk about that more in a broadcast, not on the program. And the reason for that is we're planning, we're in the planning stage of it. And it's every show that we're having everything that we're doing is different all because of the time of the year and what's happening now um, we need to do things differently not the way it was done before so some of you may be wondering why I'm wearing my Lakers hat and you'll see my name at the back of it ah yes I have always been a Lakers fan and in the 80s and 90s you'll know the Lakers rule the roost and we are 16, we have 16 wins. We are one away of time with the Boston Celtics, who is our number one enemy when it comes to the basketball court. And because we are doing well right now, I know a lot of people are bandwagonists. I've always supported the Lakers. I have never jumped in and out of supporting the Lakers. I have always supported the Lakers. If you ask me about what football team I support, it is one and only Bayern Munich. No other team. If you ask me what football team I, I support in terms of the world, 
Well, there are two teams. Germany, well, actually four teams. Germany, 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 Trinidad and Tobago, if we get to the World Cup. And if you ask me what cricket team I support, I have only supported two cricket teams. And I'm talking about international teams, Indian and West Indies. And I only support Mumbai Indians and, of course, TKR, Red Steel. Whatever name you want to call them, I support Trinidad and Tobago. Remember that, please. So, let me get rid of this for a while. Put it right in front of me here, Lakers. So, for those who are Lakers fans, they'll feel happy to see the Lakers in front of me. Let's talk about the topic for tonight. And the topic for tonight that I chose to talk about, the topic is very simple. How to spice up your sex life. Now, the reason I chose that topic is for a number of reasons. One being, a lot of times people are married and they're in a committed relationship. But as time goes by, they lose the spice. They lose that essence of their relationship. And it tends to affect them in a negative way. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. How to get out of that rut. How to make yourself feel more amorous. Despite the fact that you may have a drop in your libido, and we do know with the aging process, you can have a drop in your libido. You may experience something called andropause. You may have erectile dysfunction. Some women will have um, painful intercourse. They may not be lubricating enough. So oh, these are some of the factors that can affect an individual and thereby affect the relationship. So when we talk about a relationship, we talk about two units. Male, female, 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 male, male. Two units getting together to create another unit. That unit is the one that we have to focus on. The unit between you and your partner. That entity, that relationship that you have. And what you are doing to maintain that relationship. Now I always mention, as I've always done in the past, and I'm going to say it again. Sex is not the most important thing in your relationship. But it is the cement that binds your relationship together. It is what creates that, that bond between you and your partner. I know the life is, life is ticking. I apologize for that, but it's not my fault. I'm getting life perfectly on, I think it's Instagram. I'm not getting it. No, I'm getting it on. Actually, I'm getting it live on Facebook. But Instagram is sticking. Instagram don't usually stick. What's going on here? Hmm. Things to make you go, hmm. Well, anyway. So, when one look at your relationship, both male and female looking at your relationship, you have to understand that your input into the relationship is what is important. How you view your partner. Now, some persons view their partner as their, not only their sex partner, but also as their best friend. They have a close relationship. They have a bond with that person in such a way that they, they feel that that person is part of their life. That's how I feel about my partner. That's how I feel about my wife. That is, that is how I feel about things in general when it comes to my wife. But if you allow that to build into a relationship where you're thinking that your wife or your husband is your best friend, is your brother, is very close to you, but you're not physical with one another, you're going to end up in a bad place. That bad place is where you actually lose that feeling to have sexual intercourse with your partner. Because you wouldn't be thinking about having sex with your brother or your sister. So I try to tell couples, stay away from that you know, the, some old people will say, me and my husband, we know each other for so long. We understand each other so well. We finish each other's sentences. And we just live like brothers and sisters. Don't ever find yourself in a situation where you actually have to use those words. There's something tickling my nose. I don't know what it is. Um, where you can actually say that your partner is like your brother or your sister. So... 
We're talking about spicing up things. You must remember the things that you would like to do. Whether it be touching, feeling, holding hands, walking in the rain, going out in the garden, sitting next to one another, caressing each other. Some of us have forgotten how to do those things. We no longer offer a massage to our partner. And I'm not talking about a deep tissue, one hour long massage, holding the person's feet and just massaging it, doing all the things that the person would like. Having the person un, um, appreciate exactly what you're doing. Getting that feeling that, hey, I am touching this person, not just in a sensual way with a massage, but I'm touching this person in such a way that they're feeling what I feel for them. He or she must feel what I feel for them. You it is a transference of energy from you, positive energy, from you to your partner. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what you're doing is that you're actually making the person feel loved and appreciated. That's one aspect. Sometimes we find ourselves getting involved in other things, business, a career, children, the home, um, friends, family. And we kind of put our love life aside because we tell ourselves that, hey, we could always catch up. We could always make up for that as we get older. It's like, you know, people saying, I'm saving to travel when I retire. Because when I retire, I will have enough money to go and do the things that I want to do. So you're looking for retirement age and retirement age is supposed to be 60 and then the government of the day come and say, well, we're moving it to 65. So you have to wait another five years to retire or you will retire at 60. You have put your service in the government 33 and a third year and you've retired. But now that you retire, you have backache, leg ache, headache, High cholesterol, difficulty breathing, diabetes, hypertension, cannot walk up a hill. So you tell yourself, if I go on a vacation now, what is the sense? I would enjoy myself. It's the very same thing with investing, putting things aside and putting ideas that I am going to have a good time with my spouse later on in life. When the children are all gone, when we are living alone, then I'll have her all to myself. But remember, the mind is a, a fantastic world of its own. When you fall in love with someone, you fall in love with a body shape, you fall in love with a personality, you fall in love with a look, you fall in love with a size, that's what you fall in love with. Anyone who has fallen in love with someone is that is because that person is perfect for you. He or she may not be perfect for someone else, but they're perfect for you. But age has a way of changing things. And as you age, you put on size, your features change, you no longer feel good about yourself, so your self-esteem starts to diminish, and your partner no longer see you as the sexy individual who they fell in love with and want to continue loving. Of course, if you're abusive, that also adds to the pot because then the person is going to say, wait a minute, this is the person and they don't treat me well. Why should I show them a good time? Why should I be happy with them? I don't want to be happy with them. So, if you wait until the time is right to do the things that are going to spice up your sex life, you will never find that time. The right time to spice up your sex life is anytime. Anytime you have the opportunity to show your partner the love and appreciation you have for them, anytime you have the opportunity to show your partner how much you care, 
what you can do for them, and I'm not talking, in a, talking about a sexual way only, I'm talking about generally. The sexual part, we will get to that in a while. So the first thing that comes along is the kind of rapport you would have with your partner. Is it a good rapport? Is it something that you maintain? Despite the fact that you'll have a little quarrel and you'll have a little falling out and all those things, that's part of life. But are you maintaining a equilibrium in your relationship? Despite the fact that you will fall out, she will get angry with you, you will get angry with her for whatever reason, you still love each other very much. Love is an essential component of a good relationship. So you have these components that makes your relationship go in a particular way. Right? You have that. And you have the, all the ingredients to put your relationship on the right footing. Now you need something to bind these ingredients together. If you're baking a cake, you must put egg or something to bring it together. The flour wouldn't stay with just the water or whatever else you're putting in there. You have to bring it together. You have to bring together anything that you're doing. All foods, love, appreciation, your wife, your relationship, your husband. And that factor that brings everything together and cements it together is the sex. The sexual part of it, in case you're hearing noise on the side, that's my cat. I think he wants attention. Felix, where are you? I think he wants attention and he wants to know why I move his cat tree. His cat tree normally sits here so he can look out at the front of the house and see everything that's happening at the front. So right now I'm invading his space. Yes, he's trying to get my attention. He's invading my, I have invaded his space. I put him out to do a live for you all. Felix, I'm sorry. I'll be back. I'll give you back your house in a while. He's in his cat tree. So, you would need to find that sexual appetite within you. Now, as you age, your sexual appetite may increase and then suddenly decrease. It may go steadily along one path without there any, ever being a jump up or a dip down. Everyone is different. There is something that we all go through. Women have sexual cycles. Just as how they have a period cycle, they have a sexual cycle of five years, ups and downs, peaks and valleys. When you reach the top of it, <coughs> excuse me, when you reach <coughs> the crest, when you reach that peak in your sexual cycle, the only thing that can happen is that you go down. But how, much, how long it lasts at the top here is important. How long it lasts at the bottom here is also important. You want it to be like this. Not like this. At the top here, you want it to be like this. How do we achieve these things? We achieve it with good health, exercise, proper diet, being in love, Getting the fuel from your partner, the energy that you get, the sexual energy that you get from your partner, the chemistry between you and your partner, that's how you get it. But that's one aspect of it. The knowledge about sex. The knowledge about your partner's body. How she reacts to certain things. How he reacts to certain things. Some men would love certain things done to them in a particular way. And as you age, and as you see things differently with a maturity and have had the experience of the different things before, you may want to try something new. You may want a threesome. You may want to see your partner with someone else. You may want to share. You may want to engage in anal intercourse. I don't know what you will want. All I know is when someone wants something, they come to me and ask me how to get this done. And that's my job. To fulfill those things. But. If you and your partner. Is not on the same page. It's not going to happen. You know that right. 
It is not going to happen because you're not on the same page. He is thinking about something that is going to be different, that is going to be more arousing for him. He may be thinking about talking during sex and you, are, you have an adversity to that. You don't want to hear anything. You want to remain quiet and silent. You want all the lights out. The person may want to see you in a sexy lingerie. You're even afraid to buy a lingerie. A baby doll outfit. A brand panty that matching. Some women don't even want to get those things. Why? Because they tell yourself, if you love me, you go love me anyhow. But that's not the point. The point is that men are visually stimulated. That's why if you see a sexy woman walk across and there are 10 men there, nine of them are going to look. The other one is gay. Men are visually stimulated. So, you take care of yourself. You make sure when your partner comes home, he sees you looking sexy. He sees you looking appealing and appetizing. That's the right word, appetizing. He want to eat you. Sexually, I mean. That's what you want. Same thing with the men. You don't want to come home smelling rancid from outside. Don't take a shower. Your hair all how. Your beard all how. You're looking as though the cat, the cat drag you in and you expect your wife is going to love you and want to make love to you. You don't expect that your breath smelling foul and you want person want to kiss you. You're smoking cigarettes and your partner, you want to suck tongue with your partner and she feeling that she's sucking her ashtray or he feeling that he's sucking her ashtray. You don't want those things. You want to be appealing to your partner. And you have to do what it takes to be appealing to your partner. So, the onus is on you to do everything possible to be as appealing as possible to your partner. And not only that, you must have that conversation where he or she understands the things that you would like to do. Now, there are some women and some men who understands that their partner wants something more. And they may understand that I'm incapable of giving all those things, so they give the partner the free for all to do other things. I know of persons who have gotten it in writing that they could have sex with someone else. I know of persons who have an open relationship. I know of persons who have joined the swingers club. I know of persons who have, from time to time, requests that a female partner comes and share the bed with them. It may not be in their bedroom at home because that's private domain and I don't think you want to do that. It may be at a hotel. It may be one of our private rooms that we, Total Image or Dr. Raj Adult Boutiques, supply. But it would be somewhere where the person can actually enjoy themselves and not feel guilty about whatever they have done. The guilty feeling will come from some individuals. Yes, it will. There are persons who would think that, hey, um, is this right? Is this morally right? Is what Dr. Rad's saying the right thing to do? I'm not going to tell you whether it's right or wrong. You, know. you have to decide whether it's right or wrong, whether it's the best thing for you or not. I can't. I cannot put the idea in your head that this is something that you should do. I can suggest that these are the things that you can participate in. These are the things that you could do to spice up your sex life. And you have to decide what is best for you and your partner. And when you decide what's best for you and your partner, you either find a way to get involved with it or you find a way to accommodate it. Now, let's say, for example, you're not, you don't want to have a third party involved. And that's fine. But the person might like to look at porn and a special kind of porn. The person may like to read books about sex or on the computer. You should encourage that. You should 
tell the person that it is okay. Let's do it together. The person may want, may want mutual masturbation, where you masturbate and the person masturbates and they look at one another. There are ways to spice up your sex life. I am not telling you what to do, you know. I'm giving you suggestions. So don't go saying Dr. Rad suggests that we do so and so and let's go and do it, you know. Both of you must be on the same page. If you're not on the same page, it's not going to work out. It will not work out. It cannot work out because you're not on the same page. It's very important that you understand the needs and wants of your partner in order for it to be beneficial to you, him, him, her. You have to understand that. If you do not, if you do not do these things, if you do not have that conversation with your partner, you're not going to be happy. You are not going to be happy. You will not get to that point where you enjoy your partnership, where you enjoy your sex life, where you give the satisfaction to one another. Let's deal with satisfaction now. If from day one, you are incapable of satisfying your partner, you think 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 years down the line, you'll be able to satisfy him or her? The answer to that is no. If you are a premature ejaculator, meaning you ejaculate before you enter or as soon as you enter and the person is not satisfied, you think you're going to change that by taking a pill <coughs> or by drinking something? No. You have to learn how to control your pubococcygeal muscle, the PC muscle, how to strengthen that muscle, how to have master the control of that muscle mentally and physically. That's one of the things we offer at Total Image and Dr. Raj Clinic, the Adult Therapy Clinic. We teach people, we teach men how to last longer. It's something that I put together when I was in my teenage years. And we still use it. Now, some people tell me they go on the internet and they try this and they try that. But I know it can't work. I know 99% of the time it's going to have failure. Because they don't have the technique. I have the technique. I have taught people the technique. And our success rate with that with persons who have gone on that program is close to 100%. As long as they have done the entire program, I have had guys who are minute men, breaking in a minute, ejaculating in a minute, less than a minute, last, learn to control the muscle and last hours. And they were shocked that I was able to teach them how to control that pubococcygeal muscle, the PC muscle, to last hours and to have sex for hours, and only ejaculate when you want to. If you know Tantra, and you know Tantric sex, you'll understand that you can control your PC muscle the very same way through your mind, have orgasm without ejaculating. Therefore, if you are a premature ejaculator, and you learn to control your PC muscle, you learn to control the sensitivity of the head of your penis, you would last as long as you want to when it comes to sex. And therefore, you'll be able to satisfy your partner. So if it takes the ordinary woman 20 minutes to achieve an orgasm and you're ejaculating within one to five minutes, you're not cutting it. But if you learn to control that muscle and you last the 20 minutes or go beyond the 20 minutes, she can have an orgasm, she can have multiple orgasms, and then you ejaculate. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. Women. Don't feel women don't have the same problem. They have sexual cycles just like us. We have the same five-year cycles. As a matter of fact, just as how a woman have a period cycle, we have a cycle also every month, you know. The only thing about this is that a woman period cycle is within a 30-day cycle. Some women are 24 days, 26, 28, 27, 30, 31, like that. With men, it's 33 days. There is a day in every month when your libido is at its lowest. It has to do with the celestial beings. 
It has to do with the alignments of the planets when it comes to you and your horoscope. It has to do with you and your health. Most men, when they have a drop in the libido, they're going to, they're going to have a drop in the libido. They tell themselves, I have to put something in my back. But it doesn't work. Because when you have a drop in your libido, that's when you have to take care of yourself and wait for it to rise. So normally, that drop in your libido is between three to seven days. Some guys who have a high level of testosterone, who have a good sex drive, and if you don't believe me, for the next year, starting October this year to September next year, track yourself. Track yourself every month on a calendar, just as a woman has put the X during the period. Track yourself when your testosterone is the highest, when you feel for sex the most, and when you don't feel for sex. And I guarantee you, you're going to find some days in the month when you don't feel for sex. And if you count from when was the highest period to when you don't feel for sex, you'll realize, you'll realize you have this, goes back up like that, like a bell, like a bell, a bell curve. You have a bell curve. And in your bell curve, at the next point, it's 33 days. Try it and see. If you don't believe me, don't take my word for it. Track it and see. You will realize that there comes a time each month when you don't feel for sex. It may not be the same. It may not be the same exact day. Because remember, we're on a 33 days cycle. So obviously, we're going to go into the, another month. So if it's happened on the 24th of this month, it's going to happen on the 24th of the next month. Remember that. So don't go, there, don't go, don't go saying, Dr. Rad, say that we have a, a sexual cycle, 33 days, and it comes the same time every month. It doesn't. You have to track it to know your sexual drop. And when it's at the highest, you make use of it. That's when you should be most amorous with your partner. You should be most accommodating with your partner. You should be most sexual with your partner. And when it drops, you should be most loving with your partner. Kiss and caress and cuddle. Hug up, love up, touch each other, give the little massage, but don't let it lead to sex because you're on the downswing of your sexual cycle. And the very same thing with your five-year cycles. We don't have enough time tonight to go through the five-year cycles, but I've done it in many programs before, so if you go back to look at some of my old programs, you may find it. And later on, I could always talk more about it. I'm here to talk tonight about how to spice up your sex life. If you mesh your sexual downtime to your partner's period cycle, you might have a good thing going. Just as how a woman's period cycle is last between three to seven days, you could have the very same thing. But there are some women who want to have sex during their period. So it comes back to that one thing I always talk about, man know thyself. Know thyself. Know who you are. Know what you're capable of. If you know what you're capable of, if you know yourself, it becomes easier to deal with your sexual situation. You're not fooling yourself. You're not pretending you're something that you're not. What you are doing is actually showing that you have a control over behavior control over things that's what you're doing you are showing that you're showing that you understand your partner and you're able to take care of the sexual need needs of your partner isn't that what we're supposed to do stop being selfish you can be selfish, you know, when you're masturbating. When you're masturbating, it is a selfish act. You're taking care of yourself. So you could think about anything. You can put your mind in any circumstance. You could look at anything you want to look at. You could read anything you want to look at. Read, sorry, to masturbate. It's a selfish act. It applies to both male and female. A woman could be masturbating and thinking about whoever she wants to think about. That's her business. There's nothing wrong, you're honing nobody. When it comes to sex, if you allow yourself to
to think about your partner's satisfaction before your satisfaction, you will realize that sex is much more enjoyable. Because once you're taking care of your partner's need, he or she will take care of your needs and things will multiply. The relationship will be strengthened. The cement will be stronger. It will bind the relationship stronger. Nothing will come within the relationship to break it apart. Nothing will put a damper on the relationship because here you are taking care of your partner's sexual... Why do you feel there's infidelity in relationship? Why do you think that some people fall out of love? Because that cement was never strong. But sometimes, sometimes, the cement is there, the sex is good, but the way you treat your partner leads to a downfall or deterioration in your relationship where he or she wants out, no matter what. There's a safe saying, you know, show me a beautiful woman and I'll show you a man who is fed up of her. And that's a fact. There are some women out there that a man will say, I will give my right hand to go out with her. And there'll be another man saying, me, I will give my neck not to go out with her. Because of the type of relationship that they have, it was toxic. Things didn't work out well. It was not nice. You have to make sure that despite whatever comes your way in your relationship, good or bad, tough or easy, happy or sad, sunny or rainy, that your relationship can withstand all of that. And when your relationship could withstand all of that, you have all the ingredients for your relationship to be great. And now the sex have to be Fantastic. So if your partner is interested in pillow talk or oral sex before sex, engage in that. Find out what she or she likes. Talk about it. Bring it up during sex. Stimulate the mind. When I do my lecture, I could use the raw words. I like to use the F word. I like to use that. F the brain. Because when you have sex with somebody in their brain, the body follows. The body follows. Because you could be having sex with somebody in their vagina and penis. And the brain is not there. The brain could be, oh God, I wish this thing get over with. I ain't enjoying myself. I wonder what I'm doing cooking for lunch tomorrow. Um, I wonder what them boys doing tomorrow, eh? We're going to play a cricket match. There are men like that and there are women like that, you know. Don't feel it's a one-way street or one gender behaves that way, you know. I've heard women say men are dog and that's what it is. Uh-uh. Women are the very same way. Not everyone. Not everyone. But as a sexologist, as a professional, I can tell you, both male and female have those very same behavior and patterns. You want, when you F the mind, of, the part of your partner that he or she leaves that relationship or that situation there at that time, that sexual relationship that you just had, feeling as though I've just been effed in my mind and my body following suit. I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I'm drained. I have gotten the loving of my life and this can happen regularly over time. The sex is so good that you feel as though you have been totally transformed sexually. Not every time. There are some times that you want a quickie. There are some times that you want to just get it over with as quickly as possible and enjoy the quickie also. There are some times that you would want to do it and your partner may not want to do it, but they accommodate you. And that shouldn't be most of the times. Although some relationships are like that, where most of the time your partner accommodate you just for you to get it over with so they wouldn't have any nagging and quarrel and whatever else and they get the sex over with and they're done with that. It shouldn't be about those things. It should always be about the total satisfaction of the individual 
And when I satisfy the person or the partner, he or she will satisfy me. Because they will realize it's not a selfish act. I have been not only accommodating, but have ensured that everything that we have done is done in such a way that we enjoy, enjoy every aspect of our life and that fantastic sexual experience that we can have with one another. And you know that you cannot get it from anyone else. You will not get it from anyone else. It only comes from your partner. That, that person has that ability to let the butterflies loose. To make the birds sing in your head. To make you feel as though, oh my God, that was the best ever. And it's only every time you have sex. I shouldn't say only every time. It's every time you have sex, you get that feeling of this is the best. So you have the best meeting, the best meeting, the best, and it keeps on going. That's the way it should be. So spicing up your sex life would incorporate those things. Would take into consideration those things. The full package. Spicing up your sex life is understanding your partner's need, needs and fulfilling it. Sexual satisfaction should come from the fact that you are doing the things that are going to give you the utmost pleasure. So even if sex is once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, twice a week, four times for the week, it must be fantastic. But if you're having it regularly, and from fantastic moves to boring, or from fantastic moves to, God, I get the same feeling again, then you're overdoing it. Then you're overdoing it. And if your partner say, well, you know, last night was real good, but tonight I really cut it. No, you're overdoing it. Try to do it in such a way that the sexual act is mind-blowing. And it's not mind-blowing so often that it becomes monotonous. That it is, ah, oh God, again, boy, we're going to have sex. You don't want that. You want the person to want you. Now, if your partner comes on to you and you're not in the sexual mood, you must be able to take care of his or her needs. Oral sex, manipulation, fingering. I didn't want to flip the bird for anyone, but I was just showing fingering. Oral manipulation. Those are the things that you can do. So you don't always have to put the penis in the vagina to enjoy sex. There are oral things that you can do. There are digital things that you can do for the person to enjoy. Those are the things that you should employ. Those are the things that you should make sure that you're doing so the person enjoys whatever it takes. And there is satisfaction. So even the blowjob might feel fantastic because you know that this is a stopgap. She's just giving me the blowjob because she's not really in the mood to have sex or she's on her period or she, she come home from work and she's kind of tired and she just want to get this over with. But you realize that she enjoys performing oral sex so she don't mind doing oral sex. And the very same thing with the guys. Vice versa. He may have had a hard day at work. He may not have gotten enough sleep for the couple of days. So his testosterone has dropped. He cannot get a proper erection. So he don't feel like penetration, but he can perform orally, digitally. Those are the things that spice up your sex life. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid to get a toy to assist you in your lovemaking, you know. A jackrabbit, a vibrator, a G-spot vibrator. Those are the things that you can use to stimulate your partner. There are many things out there that you can use, a butt plug, a vibrating butt plug, a prostate stimulator. There are many things out there that you can use to stimulate your partner. 
Therefore, if you want to stimulate your partner, there are things called bullets. I'm not talking about bullets for the gun, no goalie. I am talking about a vibrating bullet or a vibrating egg insert into the vagina, pass along the, the rim of the, the entrance of the vagina or the clitoris. There are things that you can use. There are cock rings that can help you with the sexual stimulation that tickles the clitoris. There are cock rings, there are clock, cock sleeve that changes the dimensions of your penis, that helps you to prevent you from premature ejaculation because it holds the base, the spongiosum of the penis like this. So it prevents you from ejaculating. If this is the balls and this is the penis, this is where you ejaculate from, not up here. Here and your spinal column. That's where you ejaculate from. They are desensitizing cream, but I don't advocate the use of desensitizing cream and sprays because those things can damage the nerve endings in your penis. There are oral gels that you could use for deep throat. It's called good head. You spray it at the back of your throat or you put some on the penis and it can go to the back of your throat and you don't. It changes your gag reflex and your penis is allowed to go deeper into your mouth. There are creams that you can rub on your lip that vibrates the lip. They're called vibrating creams. There are things that you can put on your tongue. Things you could apply to the clitoris and the vagina. Orgasmics and other things. To stimulate the vagina differently. So you don't have to have a third party. You don't have to share your man or share your woman. But you could buy a, a simple toy. For You could buy a, a, a orgasmic cream for less than $100. And have fantastic sex. You could buy a bullet. You could buy a vibrator, an egg. A dildo. A strap-on. A over under, a double headed. All these things you can have. There are persons who have a kit of dildos and whatnot. There's one called a drill though. It attaches to a drill. There's so many things that you could get personally for you and your partner to enjoy and spice up your sex life. It's funny. Like sometimes a person will call me and say, Dr. Raj, what is the price of so-and-so dildo? And I'm like, I don't know. You know how many thousands of items there are for sex? Tens of thousands of items. You think I can remember everyone? You think I know everyone? And who said, you think I know the price of all? I don't. My brain is here to store other things, more important things, not prices. So don't ever call me for a price. Don't ever ask me the price of something. Ask me how it works. Ask me what it can do. Ask me how it is going to spice up your sex life. Ask me how it's going to make things better for you and your partner. And I will tell you. I will tell you. Today a guy on my way home, a guy called me. Asking me if I will recommend he use Viagra. I don't ever recommend anyone use Viagra. And I'm putting it out there. Viagra was never meant for sex. So too are all the Indians knockoff that it have. Kamagra, Shuagra, Winagra. They were never meant for sex. Viagra was a drug designed for people with heart condition. I don't ever advocate the use of Viagra. And if your doctor prescribe it for you, that's the way it should be given only. Not to go over the counter and buy it. But... Most doctors don't prescribe it for sex anymore. Why? There have been hundreds of cases of people who died from using it. Hundreds. So, doctors are very skeptical about doing that. Because they will like to know your heart condition. If they don't know you personally, they will not give you a prescription for it. So I don't advocate the use of those things. Natural stuff are always better. But, you have to be careful of what people call natural. There are a lot of knockoff that comes from India and China. Well, China more so. From China, you could find 
tens of thousands of items that are knock off. Be careful of those things. There are certain supplements that are very good for you. There are certain supplements that are designed to give you the best sexual stimuli, stimulation or is the best sexual stimulant. But if you have high blood pressure and you're taking medication to drop your pressure and the side effects of those medications is erectile dysfunction, you take a tablet, it's going to help you. Think about it. You're taking the high blood pressure medication every day and you're going to have sex and 15 or 20 hours before you're taking this tablet to get an erection. You think it's going to overcome the tablets that you've been taking for years for your high blood pressure? It wouldn't. So there are many times we are taking things that does not really work for us. Psychologically, we will tell ourselves it works. I know of persons who buy a particular tablet from the pharmacy for premature ejaculation, but those are tablets for the treatment of mental illnesses. Why would you take a tablet for mental illness to treat erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation? That don't make sense. It really don't make sense. But there are persons who do that. They spend their money on things that are irrelevant. And we all know sex starts in the brain. The brain is our largest sex organ. The things that you can conjure up in your brain, no other part of your body can do that. You could be having sex with your wife or your partner and thinking about someone else. That's the capacity of the brain. The largest sex organ we have in terms of mass is our skin. There are receptors in our skin that allows us to feel, to taste, to touch, to smell. That Those things are stimulation also. So use the ingredients. There's something called honey dust. How many of you have ever experienced honey dust during sex? And the wonders of honey dust, putting it on a person's nipples, licking it off while you're having sex, letting it get into your nostril and you sniff it and feel how high you get off of sex. How many of you have had the use of something called rush? Or poppers? The rush that you get in your brain when you're having sex and it expands your your feelings. Those are things that you can use. There are lots of creams now that are CBD brace that helps you with your sex life, that intensifies your sex life, that makes you feel the most fantastic feelings that you can get from sex. How many of us utilize those things? Instead of just wanting to go and buy a tablet over the counter, which may or may not work for you, because some guys say they use a tablet, it worked well for a few months, and then they have to use more, and then they realize it no longer works for them. Fine. But there are simple things that you can go to the adult, Dr. Raj Adult Boutique, or Total Image, and ask for a particular cream, something that stimulates the vagina or stimulates the penis in a particular way, Max ice cream that stimulates the vagina and the clitoris and the penis. And it brings more blood to the penis and more blood to the vagina. It's called vasodilation cream. And you enjoy sex much more. The Viva cream, very same thing. Why don't you invest some time and money in those things? The things that are going to make your sex life better. With your partner. Allowing him or her to enjoy things much more than they would have enjoyed it normally. Like the fantastic blowjob that you can give using good head. Like the way you can stimulate your partner's nipples if they're into a little pain with nipple clamps. Like the way you can stimulate the buttocks of your partner by spanking with a paddle, restraining the person, B and the S and M. Bondage and discipline, sadism and masochism. I don't know what you like, you know. You should know what you like. And you should be telling your partner what you like so that your partner will be able to fulfill your needs. If you tell me the things that you like and the things that you like done to you or to do to your partner, 
I could give you the knowledge how to bring it across. I could tell you what you can use to help your situation to make things better, to make sex fantastic. I could do that. I'm capable of doing that. But I'm not in your bedroom. I am not in bed with you. I am not there taking care of your needs. You are. Your partner has that duty. And if you don't communicate those needs to your partner, if you don't allow yourself to be truthful to yourself and say, I like this and I like that and I like anal stimulation and I like to think about an ex-woman. I, like I would wonder what it is like to kiss another man. And you are not truthful to yourself. You will never have a good sex life. You'll go through life having sex, but not enjoying it. Because the enjoyment of sex comes from here, not the physical part of it. And the things that you conjure up in your mind is always remain in here. It will remain here. God forbid you in some sort of accident, you cannot perform physically from your waist down, but it's still here. Ask anyone who has a disability, they'll tell you they still feel for sex here. You could be visually impaired. You'll still feel for sex here. Sex is in the brain, not the physical part of it, not the breast, not the penis, not the vagina, not the clitoris, here. And what you conjure up here manifests here throughout your body. There are persons who live in denial of their sexuality and sexual behavior. There are persons who want satisfaction sexually but because of society and the situation that they're in, they reject the notion or reject their partner. They're not truthful to themselves. Are you one of those? Are you one of those to not have that true feeling that manifests itself from here into your body? and outward towards your partner. There are persons who cannot get satisfaction from your partner because of shortcomings of their partner. He or she may be capable of doing the things that you need. What do you do? You have to find a way. You have to find a way to have it fulfilled. You have to find a way to fulfill those needs. And if you cannot do that, something will be wrong with you. I am Dr. Giri Raj Ramnanan, better known as Dr. Raj. My businesses are Total Image at 10 Carmody Street in St. Augustine, 645-4543 or 645-9829. I am the owner of all the Dr. Raj adult boutique throughout Trinidad. I have clinic at some of these outlets and at Total Image, the adult therapy center. I can be reached via my cell phone, 7401961. I can be reached via Facebook, for those who are my Facebook friends, via Instagram. And anyone who sends me a message, I respond. If not right away, as quickly as I can. I'm a sexologist. I'm a sex therapist. I take care of people's needs. And I try my best to help individuals. But if you have a blockage in your brain, and if you are incapable of doing the things that you're supposed to do to make yourself happy, you will never be happy. You'll be miserable all through your life. You will be dissatisfied and you will never know what true happiness is. Happiness comes from you, not me. I cannot give you happiness. It starts within here. I give myself happiness. That's why I could say I'm the happiest man in the world. I enjoy life. I enjoy life. I enjoy my job. I enjoy everything that I do. And nothing is going to change that. So, on this night, I have to say good night and thank you very much for tuning to this program. Tuning into this program. Being part of the program <coughs> and Helping me to help you. Good night.